skip to my Lou, um, uh, Kareem Reed, mm-hmm. um, uh, Curry Goat. Oh, Curry Goat. Oh, my God. That was one of me and Cam's <laughs> favorite. That nigga Curry Goat. I swear for God, like some of these individuals would have run the NBA and lit that shit up. But that man named Curry Goat, if y'all don't not familiar with Curry Goat, he probably to this day still top three individuals to play basketball coming out of New York City. And you gotta remember Rod Strickland, fucking Mark Jackson, Lamar Odom. Remember who comes out of New York City. And I'm putting that man in top three. And you can ask anybody. Anybody that was in his era and, and was playing with him and know what the caliber of game he was playing, they didn't want. They really didn't want to get on the court with him. There was nothing you could do with him. Nothing. 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 Shout out to OG. OG used to come in there with the teams and, and sauce it up. All his team was looking good. Like Fat Joe always had a great team in there. Uh, Dave, Dave um, that was rocking up from Jefferson, they always used to come up to the Rucker Park and go crazy. Um... It was just a lot. I used to like Baby Jordan a lot. Like, he didn't get too much. I didn't see him play a lot in, in, in Rucker, maybe like one or two years. But there was a kid named Baby Jordan. He used to have the, the short chain on, short gold chain on playing. And he used to go real dummy out there. Um, and you can't forget you had some of the greats. Kobe, Allen Iverson, KD, uh, um, Dr. J. Um, so many great hey, NBA players. A, oh, a butter. That's a difference. We, I got stories. That's personal. So it'd be so personal with a butter. But is this? Is this this? That's a butter went point for point with um Vince Carter one game. One, one game inside of Rucker. Inside of um inside the Gaucho Gym when Rucker Park was rained out. They had to move it to Gaucho Gym. Mm-hmm. And a butter was playing against Vince Carter. He went point for point. Score for score against Vince Carter. They had like 30 some apiece, some shit like that. One of the greatest games in Rucker history. And A. Butter is also one of the illest players to come out of Harlem and had a chance to go to the NBAs. But, you know, we all have our own demons coming from Harlem. And somehow we always get sucked in. But shout out to A. He's a, actually a, bas- a basketball coach right now, I believe, for college, if I'm not mistaken. So he's continuing on into the ba- into the basketball tradition and history and legacy. So I tip my hat to him and things like that for mustering up the courage to keep going, even though he didn't do the things that he probably wanted to do. But it's always another way to get to where you want to go. You know? Tell me something. I talked to Stephon Marbury and I talked to Jamal Crawford about this. Stephon don't want to look at the past. Jamal talks about it vividly. Were you at Rucker when they were supposed to play that game during the blackout? No, I don't believe I was. I, 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 I wasn't at that game. I wasn't and during the blackout. I remember I left out, out the out the office downtown and um, when I was working for Kevin Lyles and Leo Cohen and I was in my van hoping that my conversion van hoping that we ain't run out of gas because of the blackout was so crazy yo but i wasn't up there that day no because i think to this day man like when i look at just social media this was pre-instagram pre-twitter pre-facebook myspace yo i wonder what it would have been like just the the build up and then the shoulda coulda water it didn't it didn't but didn't happen yeah, I mean, but it was a, there was a lot of games that kind of that that kind of that kind of that kind of were like that. Hold on one second, one Look second. Out. Yo, bro, let's work out real quick, bro. But you got to come on. Don't take the usual two hours. Let's get busy, man. All right. All right. You know what you were saying, pardon me? No, no, no problem. You were talking. We were talking about the blackout, and I was saying, you know, imagine if social media existed when that game oh, yeah, that like the was hyped up. Like, there were a lot of basketball games, and there were a lot of matchups that we wanted to happen that we didn't really get to see happen. And those probably one of the illest ones that would have would have happened. And if there was social media at that time, it would have blew that shit. Had more people to Madison Square Garden up at the Rucker. I mean, you got to remember Rucker. We had people hanging off gates by the thousands, trying to squeeze in there, and the, the fucking full court damn then turned into a half court. With, hundreds of people are moving with the whole bat. If you want a fast break, there's a hundred people behind you trying to watch the fast break as you go to the upside. Yeah. Then the wave of people is coming all the way back. Like it just like it's just it's, it's no other it's, 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 it's no feeling that, that that you could probably imagine come being from Harlem. And then I remember Cam like fifteen he was playing that rucker 
remember walking all the way up to Rucker where I came, um, about to play a game, stopping on two fifth behind the Calvin Klein socks when they first dropped with the gray heel and the gray toe and shit like that. The bootleggers used to have the Calvin Klein rap on it. Yeah. Remember, used to be like, I got to get some crispy Calvin Klein ankle socks to play the game. That's when ankle socks just first started popping and got real jiggy. Remember, mm -hmm. that was all a fan. You had to have the Calvin Klein joints. Went up there playing ball and came just to get busy, man. I remember um, he was supposed to get MVP one year, but they gave it to Pop. Shouts to Pop. Pop was from 1199 where we grew up at, me and Cam. Pop mm -hmm. was dumb nice. Pop used to get super, super busy. No, East Side, they kind of, from 1199, they kind of thought we were spoiled. And, you know what I mean? Like, they didn't think that we had it in us. Pop used to go over there and bust them niggas' ass bad. Shouts to Pop. Shouts to my cousin Dave. It was a few few dope basketball players coming up in our time that, that I've witnessed and got to play against. That that was the funny part. I wasn't, I didn't pursue basketball like Cam and them, but I could get on right. any basketball court with Cam and them and get busy. It'd be a factor. You know what I mean? So, what was Cam and Mace and Marbury like on the basketball court together? So they play opposite teams, so the, it, that was a rival that went on for years, whether it was high school basketball games or whether they were very or whether it was tournament games when Marbury used to come up to LaGuardia gym I don't know if you're familiar you familiar with LaGuardia gym I am right, with the little ass nine and a half foot rim that nigga used to go off and dunk on niggas if you don't know what LaGuardia 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 was the cafeteria <laughs> with basketball ribs on it but this tournament was one of the illest tournaments in high school for us coming up because you had all the real basketball players of that era played at LaGuardia House. From Marbury to Curry Goat to Kareem Reed to Ziggy to everybody. To even, the, what was the dude, um, the Spanish dude that niggas used to go crazy for back in the days? Felipe, Felipe, Felipe Lopez. Lopez. Woo! He's a bad brother. He used to be doing 360 jump shots and shit like that. They say he was like 22 in, in, in high school, though. <laughs> they said he changes. It changed his birth to He's been looking old was, forever. He was like Danny Almonte. That was the rumor, but he was dumb nice in high school. I don't care how you put it. He was putting up buckets. Then he ended up going to the NBA. I don't think he did as well as we thought he would do, but he was from Harlem. He went to, he went to Rice and he got busy, man. You know what I mean? She, yeah. Jimmy, what was the tunnel like? I was too young to get in. What was it like? Oh, the tunnel was like the Garden of Eden. Like, <laughs> I swear to God, the tunnel was like, I can't really explain it. It was like utopia. This shit was just like, if you was in the middle of the desert and you saw Oasis, you're like, oh my God, like this shit, you go in a tunnel. With the, I first, I, I guess it impacted me so much because I first went in high school, I believe, like 11th grade or 16th right. grade. One of them, I just remember I was 16. I remember my whole outfit. I had the fucking hobo American flag jacket with the black Calvin Klein dungaree suit with the fucking all white ears with the bubble gum sole. I never forget my the bubble gums. My man Dita took us from the block. Dita was one of the biggest hustlers in our area and in our area at the time and things like that. He used to always take us to wherever he went, take us shopping. Like, yo, everybody go get fresh ears. We go to the tunnel tonight. And that from that night on, it was like, yo, it kind of blew my mind and just to get back the next week and all the way, however it was. And then to go to school the next day was like school looking at your teacher. Like, like boy, y'all don't even want to be here. If you don't understand, I just saw ice tea last night. I just saw easy E last night. And I just saw, you understand what I'm talking about? I saw Mike Tyson walk through and make the whole tunnel separate like the Red Sea. None, which one of you niggas would touch Mike with all the jury on by itself? By itself, walk through everybody. Everybody moved out of Mike way. Like, boy, I seen, like, it just came to a point where I was a, a, a fucking member of the tunnel. I used to go. If me and Cam wasn't on the road, it wasn't a Sunday I missed. I was there on the last Sunday when they closed it. I, I remember the reason why they closed it. R.I.P. the killer. Uh, killer was a big fan of oh, the Killer. Killer was from Brooklyn. Shout out to Charles Jones. This was his younger cousin. Um, yeah. he ended, up, ended up losing his life. Um, do one of these events in the tunnel and things like that and then turn to end up closing the tunnel after that. But the tunnel, you could be in there with supermodels like Naomi Campbell and turn around, be next to one of the biggest drug lords in New York City. And then at the same time, on the right side is 300 Bloods. And then on the left side, you got a bunch of dots. But then you might have Mary J. Blige walking. <laughs> then you might have Diddy walking. Or Big Pun and them might come through. Fat Joe and them might come through. Like, or Ja Rule might pull up. I remember... Uh, <laughs> God bless the dead prodigy. I won't say the story because he's not here. 
But I remember me and Cam seeing Prodigy in 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 in, in parking our car. And we caught Prodigy by himself parking his car in the same um, parking lot, but he was totally by himself. Um, they just caught us off guard. Uh, just just so young, and this is when Prodigy and them was popping yellow and black North Face. Um, survival of the fittest and shit like that. This is like, you know, like 98, 97, or maybe 96. This was like before me and Cam really got on and shit like that. Like, this right. still was doing the mixtapes for Clue and shit like that. Um, I remember when Snoop was in there and all the blood started throwing just red rags at the stage and Snoop got nervous. I don't know if he got nervous, but he, de he definitely shook him up. He like, hey, it's all love in here, man. I don't know why you're throwing the red rags, but that was your term of endearment for us because them niggas was tearing that shit up. And if you know anything right. about the culture, Snoop was was God to us because he was representing what we were living, even though they were wearing another color, but the music had no color barrier. It was just about banging. So when they came to the tunnel and they were performing, him and Dre was like, yo, next level. They performed in there for like two and a half hours. Hit after hit after hit after hit. I remember I had the uh, Flint Sloan Iceberg sweater on that day. I do remember my outfits for, for certain events. I want mm -hmm. to shit like that. It'd be so monumental in my life and shit like that. And I just remember staring at the stage from like where Flex used to DJ at and just watching Snoop and them go crazy. Like crazy, crazy, crazy. I seen how, yeah. how many pairs of Bally's and British Walkers did you own in your day? Me, I didn't own any pair. I had like one pair of uh, British Walkers and like one pair of Bally's that I got. And they were a little bit too big for me, but my moms and them were so hood that they, whatever my uncle was getting, they used to try to make the little version for me. But my uncle Ricky and my uncle Cecil, my uncle Avery, they had all the Bally's and the British Walkers and shit like that. Like I'm talking about with the tassels, the suede on the side, mm -hmm. the ones with the strings and shit like that. They was hitting before the Wallabies was hitting. Then my pops used to have all the Pumas and all the Pro Cats. I'm talking about every color, every flavor, suede, Whatever you wanted, he had matching with the BVD shirts, with the leaves, with the pinstripes and shit like that, with the permanent creases down the side. Like, I'm a real avid fan of watching all this old school shit because I used to want to wear and rock all this old school shit. I used to wear my Uncle Big uh, V Bombers. I'm maybe six or seven, and I'm putting on his V Bomber to go outside and shit looking like a dress. So I'm a real fan of the hip-hop hustlers culture. It turned me on back in the day tremendously. Do you think that that compares to the sneaker culture, the Jordan culture now? Um, it's a different feeling because you, it's, it's, not the, it's, it's, it's not the same thing that we're doing to acquire sneakers. Like back then we were hustling to get the Jordans and the feeling of hustling to, to get some money and then run to the sneaker store. I don't think I'll ever get that feeling again. Can't recreate that feeling. It's damn near like getting your first piece of pussy when you was hustling and getting your first pair of fly kicks and you know you was able to get another pair of things like that. I mean, now yeah. we keep tradition up because we like to stay fly and we like to keep it like to keep it jiggy like we did back in the day but the fight to get to that back in the day was 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 way more iller than it is now and shit like that. But sneaker culture is a very big thing in my life as you know. I'm from Harlem and I've been rocking my sneakers since I was younger trying to emulate the hustlers and things like that but you know, I, I can't I wish I could get that feeling back of, of back in the day and, and copping my first pair Stan Smith's a copy of my first pair of Reebok Classics or, you know, just copy my first pair of, or Hot Top Air Force Ones with the, with the forest green check and the forest green strap, like, crazy, you know what I mean? A few more questions. One, Dipset, when Joel gets out, how long would it take you guys to put an album together? Um... I don't know. It does. It won't take us long to do an album, but when Joel's get out, I don't know what be would be on his agenda. What's his priorities? Um, I spoke to Cam about that the other day. We're both looking forward to doing music with him. So you know, when he gets home and gets reacclimated and, and settled in, and you know what I mean, and wants to get busy, then when we gonna get busy. Or if he gets home and that's the first thing he want to do, and shit, I can't wait to do it. You know what I mean? But I gotta wait for him to get home and, and see how he's feeling. The first thing you bought with your check from balling being a hit was shit I don't know did I have the did I have the Maserati before balling or after balling I want to say after balling probably was the Maserati Cardio Port the, that was like the first one in the country with it the, the, the water blue joint looking like a shop yeah I think that might have been one of the things I brought besides my house that I had brought and my mama house I brought my Mia house, my mama house, and then I brought the Maserati, I believe. That's falling. <laughs> yeah. That's so, falling. 
So good, so good. Who dresses the flyest at a dip set? That was the most subjective ass question I could probably ask. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I just be dressing. You dig? I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I know how to put things together. So for me, I, I don't know. I would say probably Cam. Cam has a whole, Cam has a whole di different type of a, a, attacking when it comes to getting dressed. As you can see, he like the male Mona Lisa for that pink furry hat on. It's just a different caliber of getting fly when it comes to Cam and shit like that. You know what I mean? I'm I'm more like a like a James Dean type of fly, like a rugged rugged white boy in, in, in a black body and shit like that. I, I kind of know how to put it together. Um, and Joel's me and Joel's is a is a is a mix of both of us actually. Now when I look when I look when I look at him and in some of the outfits and how he dresses himself, he kind of encaptures everything all in one and shit like that. He he he's the younger one. He may, he put both of our styles together. And definitely kills it. So you know, he has a bit of the Jim Jones flair, but then on the, on the flip side, he has a bit of the Karen flair, and then he has his own flair as he puts all the Supreme and all the young dope ass clothes that like he was the first person I seen with Michael Mary and I know. That is a lot of people that's going to say, oh, we've been rocking Mike and Mary. My Jewels was the first person I've seen, period, with Mike and Mary. And I'm talking about period. And if they want to argue with that, they can't. We can go back and forth, and Mike and Mary didn't get him, give him nothing. And he brought all that. And he's, he still got, Jewels got more clothes than the fucking uh, department store. And, you know, he's been gone for like a year. So he just got a, like, stupid shit that he haven't worn that's gonna be even flying now because people can't get it they gonna see that shit crispy new but he, he's a rap guy he, he's like a hoarder when it comes to fly shit like if he likes something it's a Mary he got all the I'm talking about all the Mary shit in his house if it's Supreme he got all the Supreme shit in his house if it's motherfucking billionaire boys club like he got all mm -hmm. of it like not a little bit of it like he goes to the extreme like I need all of it like Boy, you spending a hundred thousand on one design and you tripping. But that's Jewels. Yeah, for sure. Is Jewels considered the dipset pretty boy? Um, he's the prince. He's the youngest one, so he has a he has the, he has the youth on the side and all the good luck. So I don't know if we're gonna call him a pretty boy, but you know, niggas be pretty too in a good way. You're fat. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Brother, it was Great good to talk to you. Always good to see you. Yes, my brother, I appreciate this time that we had. You always have some great questions. Um, appreciate you. Thank you. All right, man. Enjoy your workout. All right, my brother. Stay up. See you soon.